we're taking things out of context. God has, has given the mandate, the, the outline for a biblical marriage, and that is for man and woman. If there are two men and they said that they love God, that's fine. They can do what they want, but they should not come and, tell, and dictate to Christians how they should live their life. And even but they are Christians. Say, yeah, yeah, no, what do I'm saying? But, but, but you're dictating to those Christians how they should no, live no, their no, life. No, no, no. Yeah, the you Bible, are. No, no, the no, Bible are. is the authority and the rules. If no, God, God, is the, God is the authority and the rules. And how did, he, how did he communicate to us then? Well, he sent Jesus, who told us to ignore the Old Testament. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. did. Oh, please, James. Where did you tell? Show me where he says to ignore the Old Testament. If you can prove that to me, then I'll say yes. I'm going to go. I'm going to Google it so that you don't think that I'm being unfair. All right. Absolutely. So now let's the thing just is, say, can, I, can I just say, James, as well? Well, hang on. I thought this was important. It absolutely is. I'll just yeah. You come back on that. You come back on that. You do your little research and come back on that. Okay. But I'm saying this homophobic attitude that people like you keep saying there, there's a homophobic towards. No, 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 not at all. Any true Christian will love all of mankind, and it's all about salvation. Listen, if you had a child that had looked at that nice uh, blue flame in the kitchen and he wanted to touch it, what would you do? Would you yeah, let the child you, do, right? Do, do, you, no, you're talking nonsense now. I, I mean that politely. Oh. But but no. so what is the it's blue flame? What what what's the blue because flame? Is that stop, No, hang on. What are you compare with... you can't just keep talking. I've been more quiet than I ever am. What are you yeah, comparing sure. the flame to? To hurting somebody, somebody being hurt and in your you as a, a parent trying to guard and protect that child from being hurt, from hurting himself. Why? But why because what, what are they going to get better. hurt by in the context of of their love lives. I don't understand. No, no, no. It's about salvation, James. Yeah, but what are they going to get hurt? But let's just focus on one word at a time, all right? So okay, you okay. say hurt, I say what does that mean, and you say salvation. That doesn't okay. help anybody. So what no, are they no. going to get hurt by? I understand how if I put my thing, faith, hand in a fire, my hand will get hurt. How are people right. having get blessings in church, gay people having blessings in church, how are they going to get hurt? Because if the if the word, if the church condones what they're doing, they are not they're not sticking to the but mandate. But the church does the condone it. Yes. No. 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 What? You no. Know, do you not understand what I'm saying? No, I haven't got a, a clue. I don't no. I think that makes two of us. A, so the church, church does condone. The Archbishop of Canterbury and the Synod have just said that it's fine. Right. Okay. So what I'm saying is. He so the church does with, condone no, it. No, no, he's not going with a biblical mandate, though, James. But he's, he's the Archbishop he of Canterbury. He is not the authority of God. But he is the in the no, Anglican he's community. He's he's he, the head honorable. Well, I suppose technically it's King he, Charles. He thinks, no, no, he thinks he is, but he's not. Oh he's right. Because in the scriptures. So you know better than he does. No, I don't know. The scriptures knows. Which James, scriptures? This is what it is. The Bible. Which bit? From, from Genesis to Revelation, all is truth, God's that, revelation to mankind. But that never, says, that never says anything about homosexuality. Are you being real? In, in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about men laying with men. But Leviticus also talks about burning a bull on the altar as a sacrifice because the odour would please the Lord. Oh. And it says you can sell your daughter into slavery, doesn't it, in Exodus? Okay, then. So what was the first mandate that God gave to mankind? What was the first thing he said? Be I'm afraid I'm going to pull you back to Leviticus and Exodus, mate, because you just cited yeah. them. Are you, are you, do you still think it's okay to sell your daughter into slavery? No, not at all. Well, why not are you picking all. and choosing then? No, no, no. It's, it's about what God has set in order. That's Exodus 21.7, mate. You know that as well as I do. Yeah. It is, so, it is okay James. to sell your daughter into slavery. What would be a fair price, do you think, in this day and age? No, no, no. James, what, what we've got to understand, I said, you've got to get things in its context. I now, am. The, you, you, the context is, is no, the book of Exodus the and the book of Leviticus, which you just cited as your justification for um, what I describe as homophobia. So I'm just wondering why you pick that bit and yet you ignore the other bits. Are you allowed no, no, contact no. with a woman while she is in her period of menstrual uncleanliness, Clive? Yeah. No, what? no, no, no you're not, mate. That's Leviticus no. 15, 19 to 24. What? Again, James, you are taking things out of context. No, I'm you reading it out of not. the Bible. You want to bring it back to men and men. I'm bringing it back to Leviticus, which is what you just yeah. told me to do. So yeah, how sure, can sure. you tell whether or not a woman is in her period of menstrual uncleanliness? Okay, all right, all right then. So and you, how, near, how close to her are you allowed to be? 
Sure. Okay. James, okay. Then. So You're going to have to answer some of my questions at, uh, yeah, at least at one point. So let's start yes. with the slavery. Is it okay to sell my daughter into slavery? No, it's not. But it says in Leviticus that it is, Exodus that it is. No, this was what mankind was doing because there was a situation, a circumstance. What we but mankind was also lying with no. man and you said that was bad. Yeah, absolutely. So why James, is that bad, but selling a what, daughter into slavery is, no, is not acceptable? What we have to get back is to God's ideal. No, now, mate, what you is, have to do no, is tell me how I can tell okay, which, which bits I, of the Old Testament you think I we you should... Can give an example? No, you can answer can my questions. Example? No, yes, I'm going no to. I said no. Give an example. No, you can't give me an example. Okay. You need to tell me which bits of Leviticus yeah. you there choose to obey and which wife. bits you don't. That was never God's plan. Yeah, you're still just going to talk. Man you can't answer any of these woman. questions. Yeah, but I'm giving you a context here. So you My can next door, right. I know, I don't know if you're familiar with Sangeeta Maiska, who presents a, a program on this radio station on Sunday. Yes, I've, yes, I've heard so, of So that Sanskrit. is the Sabbath day. Sangeeta presents on the Sabbath no, day. Exeter, no, no, she doesn't. She ex doesn't present on the Sabbath. What day is that? Sorry? Saturday and Sunday she presents. OK, sure, yes. Saturday is the Sabbath, yes. Go ahead. Go so ahead. Exodus 35 2 clearly states that she should be put to death. Why? Because she's working on the Sabbath, mate. Oh. No, no, no. no, well, no it's no. in Exodus. You just told me to read it. No, no, no. No, I didn't tell you to read Exodus. You told me to. Was, you just said Genesis I, to Revelation. I, I, I suggested sure, sure, that sure. the Old Testament had been superseded by the Sermon on the Mount. You said it hadn't. You told me to go back to Leviticus when you were trying to justify your homophobia. I've gone to Exodus. Should, do I have to kill Sangeeta Maiska for the sin of working on the Sabbath? Yes or no? It's a simple no, question. No, you don't. So well, why not? Because the Bible tells me to. Because this is what I'm trying to explain to you, James. There is a spiritual connotation and there is a physical one. Now, when Jesus came, he explained to us the, the spiritual context of things. And right. people will be spiritually dead. Listen to what I'm saying very carefully. Oh, I am. They'll be spiritually dead or, or spiritually kill themselves yes. when they do certain things which is against God and which cuts them off from eternal life. But do I so, have to kill Sangeeta Maiska? No, I said, she. no, if she is a believer and she's violating that which she believes, do you understand? Then that is between her and God. You know that, bit, if, if you know that not... bit in Leviticus where it says that I can own slaves as long as they are purchased from neighbouring nations, right? Mm hmm So would that include Wales? Wales in, in, in England. Well, Wales no, Wales, England. is it a neighbouring nation or would I have to go to somewhere like France to buy slaves? I, I, I don't know the context of that. I can't answer that well, directly. You, you, you must know the context, because you're, you're handing down the law on, on, on homosexuality, so you must know the stuff about it. This is I, Leviticus 25.44. I may sure. indeed possess slaves, provided they are purchased from neighbouring nations. So would sure. that include Wales, or would I have to go all the way to France? If that's what the Scripture says, then that's so. OK, so, so slavery is a good I, thing. Not... Slavery is allowed, then, for you as a good no. Christian. Do you have any no. slaves? No, I don't. I okay. don't. I explained to you, James... Do you have your some... hair... What, can I ask you to describe your current hairstyle to me? It's bald. Right, so you've <laughs> trimmed it around the temples. Around the temples? Yeah, you've trimmed your hair around the temples. Um, yeah. Well, that's expressly forbidden by Leviticus 19.27. I, I no. have to kill you now. No, not at all. Well, not yes, all. Sir, this is all in your book, mate. I, again, as I said... As I, I haven't said, finished. You, yes, I haven't, what are you wearing? You've got to get it in this context. What are you wearing at the moment, Clive? I'm wearing one robe with all one thread. And what colour? No, what, what, no, you're not, though, are you? Because no, even you know how hypocritical you're sounding now, because you're not allowed no. to wear two different kinds of thread. No, no. You've you're blaspheming. Get... Not at all. Well, not mate, at all. you just are. You just like the bit that hurts the gaze, but you're happy to ignore the rest of it. Why do you think can that I, is? Can I say to you, No, James, you can answer my quickly, question. Why do you pick the bit out of all of these books that discriminates against laws. homosexuals, but you no. ignore all of the rest of it? There's some laws that were done away with at, Jesus, at the cross, but the, the moral law of liberty, the Ten Commandments... I'm going to ask you for the final still... time, for the final yeah. time, why do you choose to obey the bit that harms gay people while ignoring it, the rest of it? It doesn't harm them. They're harming themselves because they're violating the And there it the is, but you're definitely not homophobic. They're absolutely not. OK, mate. Well, really what I'd like to say is, is that uh, you both you and your contributor um, fail to accept that different age groups 
might have ex- might have experienced something differently. If I just give you just a short, uh, I bought a house 30, 30 odd years ago. Mm-hmm. I lost ten thousand pounds on that house within two years mm-hmm. because of negative equity. I paid sixteen and a half percent interest. Could you tell? Could you tell me how it is? I'm better off than people today, even at four and a half percent, where it is. How, how is it that you... you Shall I tell you why? You, 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 you can't tell me why, because anything, t- no, other, no, no, anything no, no. other than accepting that I've had it difficult... No, diff- I've got children that are the age group that you're talking about now. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you... If, if you fail, why is it, how is it now so popular that people go out, drink coffee, get their nails done, their eyelashes done... They can freely spend their money on whatever they do, and my children did you do. Not, did you not have coffee back in the 70s, Robert? You're not having any I coffee? Wouldn't have, I wouldn't have paid four or five pounds for a, for a Well, no, for that, a would have, that would have been unlikely, given the inflationary and, differences. And, 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 I won't, and I won't pay it now. Well, well, good for you. But shall I tell you why the, you're wrong on, in terms of what are the difference? The difference is, yes, you may have been paying briefly, has to be said, not consistently, briefly, 15% interest rates. The difference is mm-hmm. now is that even with interest rates at 4 or 5%, in real yeah. terms, that is a bigger burden for people, someone taking out a mortgage today because of the difference in house prices. When you were buying your house, whenever yeah. it was, back in a few decades ago, when you were buying your house, relative yeah. house prices were only three to four or maybe five times yeah. average income. Now they are seven, eight, nine or ten times yeah. average income. You're, you're, so in you're, real you're, terms... You're, you're basing that on the knowledge that you know everybody's income, aren't you? See, what you're no, doing, no, it's called an average. No, no, That's why I'm using no, no, the word average. No, no, what you're doing... I can't, obviously, I don't know is, everybody's income. I, I don't I don't have a you're, piece you're, of paper here fa- saying you're that. Failing, you're failing to accept that the possibility is that just my age group and yours and my children's have all got different challenges to bear. Yeah, of course and everybody that, has different challenges. Of course they do. I've said that at the very are. beginning. But I'm talking... We've so, got, but, Robert, we've got to talk... The point is, is that we've got to talk generally and looking at the mm-hmm. economic data across generations. Of course, people within the generations are going to have different challenges, and they're going to be rich people, they're going to be poor people. Different generations will have different challenges. Mm-hmm. Of course, no generation has it completely easy. Of course they don't. But what, mm-hmm. I, find, what, I, what I struggle to understand is why people like yeah. yourself, with respect, don't yeah. acknowledge, just on the basis of the empirical data, that on house prices, on wages, which are the things that matter most, is that the generation below you and the one yeah. below that has had it much more difficult than your own. No, I don't believe that. Yeah, but at all. you might it's not believe it. It's, it's just fact. It doesn't matter no, what not, you believe. It's not fact because you're not considering that whilst my daughter's at university, because I don't, because I have, uh, I'm married and have stayed married for the years that I have. Because I'm a homeowner, homeowner now I'm having to fund my daughter's accommodation for five to six to seven thousand pound a year. Yeah. Uh, my parents, my parents didn't have to do that. Yeah. But, so well, there you go. But I'm talking about wages and I'm talking about no, house prices. But, my, but my, my, my wages at the age that I am are having to be spent on other things that people in their 40s but, aren't even considering. But, but when, right did you buy, when did you buy your house, Robert? I, just, I said to you, about 30 years ago. 30 years ago. How much has it gone up in value since then? I'm not in the same house, am I? Obviously. Well, okay. Well, how much do you think you, you so you've consistently got you've consistently sort of bought up, right? I, there is I, no I, way I we're going to see house price appreciation, the oh, sort of which that your generation has enjoyed. How much did you How much did you buy your first house for? How much did I buy? It was about fifty-eight thousand pounds. Fifty-eight thousand pounds. The average house price today has accelerated in that yeah. in real terms by fa- by yeah. by an enormous amount. So, and what am I What am I going to have to do? With my house, if I have to go into a home, me because I've spent I spent all well, my life. Well, at least life. you're going to have that. What's my generation going to have? We're not even going to have well, a home if, to do that. If, That's if the point I'm making. No, well, you're you're missing the point. No, no, because if you, you if just if don't, you don't want to hear home, it. If you don't, you, if you don't have a home to go in, you'll get trundled off to a to a care home. Oh, good. That my house will be taken away from me. That's oh, yesterday's oh, point good. about in, so you'll about get to tax. so you'll get to choose you'll get to choose the sort of care that you have and have a good quality care and hope that hope the rest of us you know but I just don't understand why it is that that people of your generation simply aren't able to accept the empirical facts you say you don't believe it it's just a fact you know what like I said what I said to Rachel Cunliffe it's absolutely fine good luck to you I am so glad that you had that house price increase and you benefited from it I'm so glad that you had the price that you had stable uh, I'm so glad that your there was real price uh, real wage growth in that time so glad good for you. I just wish we'd had it the same, and I just wish you would recognise that the no, generations you below you, you have not you enjoyed those things. It's just you, fact. You don't know that you don't know that you won't have it the same. 
Well, know, we've had 13 you know, years. We have 15 years since the financial crisis. We haven't had it. A whole generation's already been scarred. There's no recovery from that. It's already affected permanently people's long-term yeah. wage growth. That is a fact. So the prices of houses didn't go down last month, then? They went down for one month, Robert. They went down for one month. Do you think that's going to reverse literally 15 to 20 years of this stuff? It went down for one month, be- mate. Because, because it did 30 years ago. Because it's happened before. You're, right. you're missing... Okay. You, it, 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 so you it, think it's going to go, go back down to 58 grand, the average, when you bought your house? You think the average house, which is currently over a quarter of a million pounds, is going to go back down to 58 grand any time soon? Well, it might, might not. OK, maybe it might. Lots of things might happen. I really enjoy your show, but yeah. on this occasion I have to disagree a bit with you. Um, I don't think it's a question of that they haven't made their mind up. They have actually made their mind up, in my opinion. What it is is they don't buy into the US stroke NATO narrative on the war. And um, oh, What is that narrative? The, the narrative is that Russia invaded a year ago um, and that, um, we're, you know, without any proper historical context to it, it, it have, when, um, when having, you, having promised they wouldn't. Well, let me just explain. No, this. no, no, but, no, there'll be no explaining. No. Oh, okay. I'm getting a little bit tired who sp- people who want to support a regime that factually, it is known, allows soldiers to rape women and abduct children. NATO rape why, don't, in don't, why don't you just look yourself in the mirror hmm, and ask yourself this morning, as we look at a total of 300,000 plus lives lost, Ukrainian and Russian side, why you would reach for the phone to call LBC and start saying that Putin is being in some way, shape or form unfairly treated. He's a brutal dictator who picked a war that he's going to lose and his troops behave in an almost subhuman way. Why, for the love of all that's holy, would you seek to support them? And I bet anything you like now, Chris, we're going to hear about how Britain, behave, how Britain behaves in the same way. Bet that's Can what it's going to be. Here we speak? go. Can you allow me to speak? Yeah, here we go. But it's going to be we say in the same way. Go, go ahead. Oh no, thank you ever so much. Go on. Um, basically, India and China have got long experience of. You know, no, no, no. That's not answering the question. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. When you got up in the mirror, in the morning and you look yourself in the mirror, ask yourself, why am I supporting a dictator whose troops rape I'm grandmothers? I'm not supporting Putin. I don't. Why? Why him. are you taking his side then? Why are you talking about? The, the what was invasion that he said would never take place. Why? Ask yourself why. Answer it now. US troops were going there into... There you go. I knew it. I got you. I thought it would be the UK, but in fact it was the US. I advisors, bloody well knew it. Uh, yeah, US I advisors. bloody well knew that. What? I knew you were going to do that because that is the futility of your lame argument. No. You're banned. You look at the You're 2014 banned. Okay, no, US listen to me. Listen to me. And I hate to do it on such a grim anniversary. You are banned from listening to this show. OK? <laughs> and I'm glad you love it. You can listen to all the other shows. If I ever catch you listening again, I will take serious action because I am sick and tired to my bloody back teeth of people trying to pretend that this is anything but an attack on the Ukraine people, the whole idea of Ukraine nation. That is what it is. Listen to the rest of the station. Don't ever listen to me. Hi there. Everyone's been comparing the war to, you know, that Israel, that the Hamas is treating Israel like terrorists, like, sorry, like, um, like the Holocaust, right, where they go again and literally slaughtering people. Um, my Not which they have done. Right, which they have done. But my personal opinion is that the way Israel are treating the people in Gaza is like a ghetto. They've cooped them up there. Two million people in a tiny space of land, about 20 by 10 kilometres. Right. Now, everyone's trying to say that the guards and civilians are not behind the Hamas, but I don't blame them if they are, and I do think they are, because this is how they've been locked up in there. It is unacceptable, and no one is voicing their opinion, and even their Arab nations are joining up with Israel, and they don't realise what Israel is doing to them. Well, they clearly, the they clearly way, do. The only, they clearly the do, only way to voice no, their opinion. They clearly do understand the situation in Israel. They see Hamas as a, a, a malignant cancer on the Palestinian movement, which they are. Um, they, they know that it's actually, at least in part, Hamas who uh, is responsible for the fact, the fact that the peace talks have not progressed over the last years uh, because there have been chances to get a two-state solution and, and yet it is largely the extremists who've sort of made sure that the, the, that doesn't happen. So that, that Israel actually left 
Gaza in 2005 and left it to be self-governed. And it's been a, a, a terrible failure by the Palestinians to actually achieve effective self-government. Right, well, how do you want them to make a effectual government with you know, everything being limited and watched by Israel, which comes into the country, right, which comes into their tiny little space, Right, and so, they've, got so, no so you space, think, and, and, they've got no space for the people. Israel aren't giving them, the, you know, enough to deal for two million people, and Israel is only about eight. And it's who knows what, how much bigger it is, even though it's so small. So, all you've done in this phone call is, is talk about the plight of the Palestinians in Gaza, and I'm not, I'm not going to disagree that the, the living conditions there have been appalling for a very long time. I completely agree with that. But right, you, so you what think do that, you want that Hamas th- to do if this is well, the only way to avoid on, their on, opinion? Uh, well, so you, you think this is a way they should have voiced their opinion, do you? Right, well, there, well, there's no other way to voice it, right? Well, isn't it, isn't it funny how Fatah in the West Bank, they don't do this sort of thing. They have regular back-channel conversations with the Israeli government, and right. there are, re- there are, are there? relations... How many people are look, there look, in the West Bank? If, if, you're going to keep, if, if you're going to keep talking when I'm talking, because you don't like what I'm saying, I'll end the call right now. Go ahead. Would, you, would, you, like to, would you like to condemn what, what Hamas did? Would you like to condemn what Hamas did, killing hundreds, if not thousands, of Israeli citizens, beheading babies? Well, this is the only way for them to voice their opinion. Oh, OK, go away, Mo. I don't want anybody like you on my programme. You disgust me with that kind of attitude. There is no excuse. You cannot equate a democratic state like Israel with a terrorist grouping. You simply cannot. We don't want more suffering. We don't want civilians to get hurt. But in order for civilians not to get hurt, in order for us to be able to target Hamas's infrastructure, in order for us to be able to get to every single terrorist who was involved in the atrocious ISIS-style massacres that took place last week, we need civilians to get out of the way. Well, I'd like to talk to you about that that order to flee. I would Hang on a minute. Please. This is an interview and I'd like to put the questions to you please. that my listeners want answered. Please, I'm happy to hear. On the uh, issue uh, of the order to flee, which is an order uh, to 1.1 million Palestinians in the north of Gaza uh, to move southward, uh, and your original time frame was 24 hours, Jan Egland, General Secretary of the Norwegian Refugee Council, and a man who, as you know, helped broker the Oslo peace accords, says the Israeli order for civilians to move from north to south is impossible and illegal. It amounts to forcible transfers and a war crime. That's right, isn't it? No, absolutely not. And let me explain why. The United Nations cannot have its cake and eat it. It cannot say on the one hand that Israel is not from the United Hamas. Nations. He is not well, from the United I Nations. Would put it he is from the this North. Claim. Please let me ask the questions and correct you on factual matters. I have read to you a quote from Jan Egeland, who is General Secretary of the Norwegian Refugee Council. He is also a man who helped negotiate the Oslo Peace Accords. Would you react to the quote I put to you, please? Thank you for that factual correction. I would refer to anyone making the claim that Israel should not be urging civilians to get out of the way temporarily for their safety, but they cannot have their cake and eat it. They cannot, on the one hand, say that Israel cannot target Hamas infrastructure because civilians might get hurt, and then at the same time, tell it not to ask civilians temporarily to evacuate the combat zones because they might be displaced. The consequence of that is to tell Israel that it has no means to exercise its legitimate right to self-defense, a right that all the leaders of the free world have acknowledged, in fact, saying Israel has a duty to do so. If they're telling Israel it cannot attack Hamas targets and it cannot ask people to get out of the way, it is telling us that in response to the worst terror attack in world history after 9-11, there is nothing Israel can do. Which and I'm which creditable humanitarian organization has said that Israel does not have the right to self-defense? Well, I'm explaining that has that is Has the UN illogical... said that? Because it hasn't. Well, nor, so have, explaining... nor have the Norwegian Refugee Council. So which credible international humanitarian organization, can you name it, which is it? No humanitarian organization has made that claim explicitly. So why but I'm are you saying, saying that they because have? I'm, 
because I'm saying this is the logical consequence of arguing that Israel cannot target Hamas infrastructure. That is your opinion. That is not no, the logical it consequence. Is, it is a logical consequence of saying that Israel cannot target the areas while civilians are there and that civilians cannot be asked to move. The only way that Israel can target Hamas terrorists without harming civilians is if they get out of harm's way. And that is what is Israel is politely requesting they do and move to safer areas in the southern Gaza Strip so that we can target the ISIS-like terrorists who perpetrated last week's massacre. We do not want civilians to get hurt. And in order for civilians not to get hurt, we're asking them to get out of harm's way. By the way, just like Israel has evacuated large parts of southern Israel, all the kibbutzim along the border, even the city of Sderot today, Israel is encouraging the size the of Israel is in no way comparable to the size of Gaza. Let me read this quote to you. This is Joseph Borrell, EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Israel has the right to defend itself, he says, categorically categorically. But it has to be done according to the right of international law and humanitarian law. Some decisions are against this international law. I put it to you again. He is right, is he not? Israel does not want civilians to get hurt. In order for that to happen, we are asking them to get out of the way. We categorically reject the assertion that asking civilians to vacate a combat zone temporarily so that we can target the terrorists who have embedded themselves under their homes, under their hospitals, and under their schools is against international law. Israel has a legitimate right to defend itself as the United Nations, as, pardon me, as the European Union has made very clear. And in order for us to do that, we need civilians to get out of harm's way. And I would argue that what is impeding our efforts to minimize civilian casualties in the Gaza Strip is certain members of the international community telling uh, the residents of Gaza that they should not be vacating. And tragically, we sorry, have evidence sorry, that sorry, Hamas... Sorry, just to interrupt once more. I, I do apologize, Please. but I must jump in. Did you just That's say right. humanitarian agencies are telling ref, um, uh, Gazans not to move? Is that what I just I'm, heard you say? I'm, I'm saying that instead of urging them to comply with Israel's advice to clear out of to clear out temporarily from the combat zones, they are saying that this is impossible and adding complications to our efforts to keep civilians out of harm's way. That in itself is something that is going to endanger civilians. In addition to Hamas's efforts to physically stop Palestinians from getting out of the safe zones, the Israeli army has released photographic evidence of roadblocks that Hamas has established to stop civilians getting out of harm's way. And we have evidence that Hamas has been stealing people's car keys as well in order to keep them in the combat zone so that they can martyr themselves for the cause. We are not Hamas. We do not share their same worship of death. We are a democratic country that wants life. We don't want more people to be hurt. That's why we are asking them to evacuate temporarily from the combat zones. You are indeed so a sovereign state. You are, a, in fact, the only democracy in the region. Uh, you are well respected by your allies. You are also signatories to the Geneva Convention uh, and Article 3 of the Geneva Convention, which, as you know, states that uh, no collective punishment should be meted out to civilians uh, for the crimes of combat. Combatants. Yesterday, I spoke to your uh, to another spokesperson uh, from the Israeli side. Uh, that was the IDF spokesperson, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner. Uh, he said that uh, uh, Israel, like you, had given uh, the 1.1 million Gazans plenty of time uh, to uh, flee. Uh, he said that the routes were safe. This morning, there are verified accounts that at least 70 civilians have died as a result of bombing on the routes out of the north to the south, and a further 200 are injured. That does not sound safe at all, does it? I'm glad you mentioned that incident, because we should all take with a pinch of salt any information coming out of the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, knowing that it is waging a war of misinformation against Israel. The allegation that Israel bombed that convoy has not been verified independently by anyone. What well, questions that have been raised by independent OSIT investigators who have slowed down the video of that explosion, they see absolutely no projectile falling from the sky and have raised very serious the very serious prospect that it was in fact caused by the explosion of a gas canister. Now, it was irresponsible of the international media to run ahead alleging that this was Israel based on information coming from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip and this terrorist war of propaganda against Israel. Israel is not targeting civilians. It is asking civilians to get out of harm's way. Every such allegation is being investigated, and I would hope that the international media in the heat of war also wait to independently verify claims of atrocities, knowing that Hamas has an interest to make up atrocities in order to besmirch Israel and win sympathy among the international community. 
community. I absolutely agree with you. And the heard. report has come, uh, is printed on the front page of the Observer newspaper, and it does not come from Hamas. It has been independently verified by uh, two uh, independent organisations. Uh, you mentioned the siege uh, there, and I previously mentioned uh, the uh, Article 33 of the Geneva Convention. Um, let's turn to... Uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk. He says that the imposition of sieges that endanger the lives of civilians by depriving them of uh, essential items, including food, water and medical supplies, uh, breaks international humanitarian law. Your reaction? The residents of the Gaza Strip are not going to starve, period. Food is running out. That means they will starve. But it is important, I assure you, they will not. Israel is working with international partners to create humanitarian... I cannot obviously comment on the details of sensitive confidential diplomatic discussions. Well, give us a timeline then. Time is running out. I cannot cannot give you a timeline, but I can tell you... I can tell you that Israel is working with international partners to establish humanitarian frameworks in the southern Gaza Strip that will help to ensure the safety of Palestinian civilians who heed Israel's advice to evacuate the combat zones to areas where it will be safer. And it is important to understand, I think, the reality that is taking place on the border, because I think some people don't understand that the entire area around the Gaza Strip is a war zone. People talk about We absolutely do understand it on this programme, I'm afraid, because we have a 20-minute interview, which is far longer than LBC normally does, uh, with your colleague, as I say, from the IDF, talking about borders. Uh, the World Food Programme says that it has two weeks' worth of supplies for civilians, including medical supplies, uh, uh, waiting to enter via the uh, uh, egyptian uh, Gazan border. Will you allow that aid in? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? The World Food Programme says that it has enough supplies to keep Gazans going for two weeks and that they can bring those supplies in via the Egyptian-Gaza border. Is Israel willing to allow those supplies into Gaza? Your question is whether supplies may be delivered through the Egyptian-Gaza border. I would suggest that is not an appropriate question to be asking an Israeli government spokesman. I do not control that border. Well, they say that they are being stopped by Israel who have sealed the borders. Therefore, it is an entirely appropriate question to ask you. And that, in fact, was uh, reported by the BBC just three days ago. Unless, of course, you're going to say they're not a verified journalist either. I, I I I will answer. First of all, Israel does not control the border between Egypt and the Gaza Strip. It Israel sealed, does control the it, border. It has sealed the it, entrance, hasn't it? Israel has not sealed the border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt because we do not control that border. That is a border between the Why did an Israeli, the Israeli spokesperson say that to the BBC just three days ago then? I'm not aware of this specific report. I can speak to the reality inside Israel, which is that the main crossing between the Gaza Strip and Egypt was almost entirely, sorry, between the Gaza Strip and Israel was almost entirely destroyed on Saturday when Hamas death squads invaded, massacred everyone in their path and blew it up. The only openings between the Gaza Strip and Israel at the moment are the holes in the fence that we're desperately trying to seal. And I wouldn't advise anyone to try to pass through those. We're talking about an area of active combat, rockets still falling on the area. Israeli forces trying to secure the scene to make sure that terrorists do not come out. The infrastructure does not exist on the ground for supplies to be delivered between Israel and the Gaza Strip because we're talking about an ongoing conflict zone uh, and uh, areas that are constantly being under attack from the terrorists inside the Gaza Strip who perpetrated the massacre that we saw last week. As I said, the world's worst terror attack since 9-11 and that is a terrorist organization that Israel is determined to destroy inside the Gaza Strip while minimising harm to civilian casualties by asking them to get out of the way temporarily if the until WHO, the fighting is if over. If the WHO can get supplies in via the Egyptian border with Gaza that you say you have no control over, uh, would, you, would you ensure the safety of the humanitarian convoy? As I would refer you to my answer to your previous question, Israel is currently working with international partners to create a humanitarian framework that will ensure the safety of people in the southern Gaza Strip who get out of the way from the fighting in the north. Beyond that, I cannot elaborate, saying that Israel 
is Understood. working with our international partners to create that framework. Understood, Mr. Levy. Um, uh, let's talk about the hospital. In that you've just referred again, haven't you, to the uh, northern part of Gaza. Uh, you accept that you have ordered 1.1 million Gazans to uh, flee southward. Uh, inside that northern territory is Israel's biggest hospital. That includes babies that are uh, in incubators, that includes the elderly, that includes people that need, uh, that have just undergone operations, that includes people who uh, are victims uh, of, uh, as Israel has described, the collateral damage done by uh, targeting Hamas buildings. How do you expect any of those patients to flee northern Gaza and move south? If I'm not mistaken, uh, Sangeeta, are we talking about the same hospital in the Gaza Strip underneath which the Hamas terrorist organization has established its military headquarters? Are we talking about the same hospital? I'm asking you a question. How do you expect the patients that I have just described to you to flee? I think the question that should be asked is why the Hamas terrorist organization That may be the question you want asked. That is not the question I'm asking you. How do you expect patients in Gaza's biggest hospital to flee. Israel wants to target the Hamas terrorists who were responsible for the massacre last week. For that to happen, we need civilians to get out of the way. We understand How that may be a very difficult task. Do that, we Mr. understand Levy. that may be we understand that may be a very difficult task. That's why Israel has identified routes along which people may evacuate. That is why Israel has given them more time. What happens the if they can't leave because window. they're sick? I'm not going to speculate on what may or may not happen. What I'm saying now is that the people of Gaza, preferably with the encouragement of the international community, should do all that they can, make every human effort in order to evacuate the combat zone. Because Hamas has embedded itself deep inside civilian population, under the civilian infrastructure, inside homes, inside schools, inside hospitals. And in order for us to target Hamas, we would like as many civilians, as many as feasibly humanly possible, to get out of the way because, Sangeeta, we are honestly sick of the suffering and we don't want to see any more images of suffering. And for that, I think we're taking a step that I don't recall any other country or any other army in the world taking in encouraging civilians to flee and giving so much warning before we proceed with our legitimate right of self-defence. Mr Levy, I'm only leaving you because we have I've run way over time. Here's Tom as uh, one of his closest advisers who is involved in that uh, legal action. So the Labour Party... What's are, his name or her name? ...implicit in, in trying to prevent this yeah, approach. Well, well, but, well, perhaps they disagree with your policy, so they're using all means to, to, to stop well, I think it, the, which well, is Labour fair enough within be, the confines Labour, of the law. Who is oh, this person? Who is Sakir Starmer's be, friend? They should be on it. Well, they've sat on a number of um, boards that are linked to the... So I just, I don't know, Robert, what the name of this person is. So we could look up the story. I wonder if you could tell us the name of this person so we can have a good look at it. Well, you, you can read, if you'd like, my op-ed in today's Sun that uh, that talks about um, Sakir's advisor, uh, who sat on a number of panels with right. him. Um, but the, the point I'm making here is that the Labour Party's approach is one whereby they support uh, all of these efforts to prevent um, our, our, our efforts to stop the boats. And, you know, I think that people just have to be honest oh, about that. that that's yes. that's going to make life much more difficult okay. uh, to take forward the policy that we're pursuing. Sakir Starmer, you say in your, uh, in your op-ed in The Sun today, page 14, faces serious questions about his links with charities and lawyers who've campaigned to thwart our work to stop the boats. Today, we learned that a top lawyer who advised Labour on anti-racism policies is at the forefront of efforts to stop people being deported to uh, Rwanda. Where is it? Where is the name here? Um, well, it's in it's in it's in the article. What is the name? Uh, <laughs> Please. What's, what's the name? Uh, well, it's in the article that's uh, that's published um, in, in The Sun. But the, the point I'm making is that. <laughs> that the Labour Party strongly supports these efforts, which are making it much more difficult for us to take action to to stop the boats in the first place. But you and know that... what? I don't think a lot of natural conservative voters, and by the way, I can't, I can't find the name. I'll read it if you don't want to tell me the name for some reason. But um, it, it's not so much illegal um, as you would have it, migration, asylum seeking. It's not. It's legal migration to this country, which is causing... 
um, you know, some confusion amongst natural conservative voters. You've got 1.3 million people coming to this country, what, 600,000 people leaving. It leaves a net migration figure all totally legal, which is very, very high. I mean, you believe that legal migration at 600,000 is something that Conservative Party voters want to see? No, we think that legal migration is far too high. Well, why do you always talk about the boats then? We want to bring it down. Well, I think that is the first priority of the British public Mm. because there is a clear distinction between coming here legally through the routes that we've created and those people essentially breaking into our country by getting into small boats, paying people smugglers uh, to ferry them across the channel. They're they're, they're coming across, they're risking their lives on basically a lilo for their life savings. They're not breaking into the country, are they? Well, we well, I think we obviously disagree on that point. I think that coming into uh, a country illegally is a serious offence. I think if you or I did it, we would expect uh, to be treated robustly by uh, yeah. the law enforcement agencies of a foreign country. Uh, it is a serious crime. That's set out in the law that we passed a year ago, the Nationality and Borders Act. And that's why we're looking to enforce this. But, I don't you know, think it's you're... true that some people refuse to yeah. acknowledge that. You I don't, I don't think you've named... It's illegal. Robert, I don't think you've named this person, Sir Keir's mate, who's trying to thwart all your cunning plans to stop people getting in boats and coming over here. I don't think you've named the person in this article. Either that or the uh, somebody, some sub has taken it out. So I'll ask you again. Can you just name the person that you, you, that you claim in your article is... is uh, uh, is uh, is stopping people being deported to R- Rwanda, who is a mate of Sakir Starmer. Can you just give me the name? Uh, well, it, it is actually named in, in the article that uh, we've seen. And also Where in, is uh, it? What's uh, the name? In, in what line? Se- what paragraph? In the Home Secretary. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you so you can... You can I mean, see this it. is the absolute uh, mystery to me. I don't, I, I don't understand why that, that is. What, why don't you want to name that person when you say that that person's name is in that piece and I can't find it? Why don't you want to name that person? Um, well, I think I'm sorry can, to be so stuck be able, on this. You, no, no, I understand. But you, you'll be able to find it uh, online if you take a look. It's an absolute bizarre. I'm not a Boris lover, but right. he got given the job to get us out of Europe. The EU, yeah, and he done he done a good job. He done a good number on it, right? I what's your fa- what's your favourite bit? Should have left. What's your favourite bit? What the fact that we left? No, about about the thing that's better now we've gone. Well, it's very difficult to put anything. It's no worse. Well, it is, isn't it? We're, we're it's not. We're, it's not. We're what's caused? What's caused the? The worseness, if if that's a word, yeah, is not that we've left the EU. It's the fact that there was a pandemic followed straight after by a war. Yeah, you but, can't blame what's going it's, on. It, it's not though, is it? Because the yes, it is. Uh, well, this is the uh, point you're missing. Okay. Well, I mean, where are you getting your information from? Because I'm getting mine from the IMF, the Bank of England, the IMF. Yeah, right. And the Bank of they're, England. They're the people that said we're going to have... But where are you getting uh, your information from? They're the people that said that we were going to have the uh, go into recession and we're the only one that's not going to make any money. We've got... Just before the uh, pandemic, yeah. in between the small gap between leaving and the uh, pandemic, this country was making more money. OK, mate. Right. Yeah. Okay. What? 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 Where are you getting your information from about the 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 four percent hit to GDP having nothing to do with Brexit? You heard the governor the, of the Bank the of England and, yesterday. And LBC, to be honest. Pardon? LBC. I listen to you, and I listen to what they say. What right. Well, you haven't is, heard me right, say what that. What they're saying is right that yeah. the the four percent uh, right yeah. drop yeah is based on list trust. No, they're not saying that. That's what it's from. Yes. That's the period that they're taking their analysts it's, it's, from. It's over the last three years. Well, she was she was only prime minister for ten minutes last so year, mate. So, out of them last three years, what have we had? So we've so the, the it's a hundred. 
Is it 100 million or 100 billion a year? It must, must be 100 billion. Uh, no, let, let, tell me what we've, what we've actually had. We've had pandemic. Yeah, we've had uh, war. Yes, I know, mate. Had... But no, there's literally nobody who thinks Brexit's had nothing to do with our decline. Because all the other countries have had pandemic no, and war. No, Brexit uh, only uh, remainers. No, no Andy, just, just have a little think about this. We're doing worse than all the other countries that had the pandemic and the war as well. What, before or after? Before or after what, Andy? Well, I don't know. You're asking the question. Yeah, OK, let me try again. The things you're blaming for our problems happen to all the other countries that we're being compared to, and we're yeah. still bottom. Right. So the, prob the, the immediate problem that we had, yeah. and I didn't agree with this, uh, this trust being... Um, leader of the party. Don't, don't make me remind that. you that we're looking at three years of economic damage. Uh, That's two, not two, because of two, Liz Truss. Over two of them years, yeah. right, we, we was, okay. ev everyone in the world was struggling, right? But pr just prior to that, we was one of the best we, at we, But why do you keep money? saying that again? I'd ask, where are you getting that information from? You think that in 2018 we were, we were going great guns economically? Yeah. Okay, where are you getting that information from? Same price that you get yours, well, the media. No, but you're not. Else. You're not though, because because that that's not an opinion, is it? That's counting, and and no one has provided figures to back up that. Let's pretend you're right, okay? Let's pretend that the British economy was the best, doing brilliantly between 2016 and 2018. We hadn't left the European Union then, of course, but today, no, just when, after we left the uh, EU, yeah, when, yeah but, when, but, we we, but we didn't leave. We officially left, but we didn't leave, did we? That was. That was three years ago. Uh, and, and look at the corruption, right, yeah. that was coming out of the EU when we was trying to leave. Worse lie than, after lie after lie. What, refusal to what, give us what, what, all the facts what's your big about what's, what was going on. And what's your best example of that, Andy? Well, the fact that when we signed up for the um, common market... Hang on a minute. We you, you just, we okay, to, carry on. For us, to, for us to join, right, yeah. we agreed wrongly in my opinion, to pay 16% on top of anything that we buy. Yeah. Right? So what was the lie we that they that. were... What were the lies they were telling us in 2016, 2017? They wasn't, they wasn't coming across... With, when we asked for... But you just said all the corruption... The you other, just, they refused you, to give it. Yeah, you just the said all, the, all the... Listen, Andy, I'm going to keep you on until... Yeah, you just said all the corruption. Lies. You just said all the corruption and lies, and I just want an answer to an example of what you're talking about. Well, they lied about what was happening. Go on. Well, every, every, everything that the EU was doing. Yeah, go on. What? I mean, they lied about the vaccine that we gave them. But, but that that was long after Brexit, Andy. You but just it said. Matter. Well, it, they it, 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 it made it. They if you say, to lie. I don't know what you're talking about, and I mean that politely. But if you say, and then there was all the corruption and lies that came out just before we left, you have to. You, you're not telling me that the EU, okay. upper, uh, the unelected dictatorship of the EU, yeah. didn't lie. All right, but well, I can say that they didn't. If you can't give me an example of them doing it, so go on, have another go. Off the top of my head, yeah. right, because I've just done a long drive. Okay. And I didn't expect to be on here. Did I we ring you? Any, uh, Did we take you by surprise? Moment, we've got, we've got to stop. Hang on a minute. You've got to stop ringing people unexpectedly. All right? Poor fella's just had a long drive. Yeah, what's he going to do if he, LBC are on the phone and they put him live on the radio and he's got to actually explain? Sorry, mate. I had no idea that we took you by surprise this morning, but crack on. That's all right. Yeah. I mean... You take the vaccine. No, 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 no. You just said off the top of my head examples of the corruption and lies they were telling us in 2015. Well, they didn't come across with the answers. Corruption and lies, it's not please. So they didn't lie. Well, hang. You just said they did. Uh, hang on, hang on. All right, I'm getting a little bit right. It wasn't so much that they lied. Right. right? No, it was the corruption. That they didn't give us the information that we requested about. Well, figures about this, that and the other. What information right? is that well, then? Any information that we asked for, they refused to give us. When did they do that then? When we was campaigning to leave. What information do you think that you're talking about? 
all the finances uh, and what they're taking and that. Yeah, who on yeah, earth told you that we didn't have? Who, to, who told, told been, you? Been, who told you that we didn't have access? We were in it. We were part of it. When you say they, you mean we. Who told you that we couldn't well, access the are, information that you don't know the name of? And that they refused to who, who told you this? Who told you this? It was on the news. What documents? When Off the top of your head. Certain documents. Yeah, what documents? I can't remember which documents they were. Do you have a right? single scintilla? Do you have a single of scintilla of fact lies. to support anything that you're saying? Can you think of one example of lies, of corruption, of documents? Yeah. Go on. Well, it might not have been them, but since then... No, before. Since, no, this is, this is what we were dealing with. Yeah, People go on, before, Andy. about the vaccine. What was the lie about the vaccine, Andy? They said that it, uh, it killed people. That, who said, said that? that? The European? Are you talking but about they, the European they, Union now? Later on, they just wanted to discredit oh, us. OK, let's go back to the central question. Why do you think Boris Johnson thinks being in the European Union is a great idea? Because that's what he was asked to do, told to do. I told you I'm not a lover of Boris. No, but why right? is he telling but, Ukraine to join? He told but, you to leave, but, but he's telling but, Ukraine to join. Why is that then? I didn't, I didn't rely on what he said. It's what I see. Yeah, I know. I, and I, I, I see that this country yeah. is far better. The trouble with this country is we've got too many people that are making decisions yeah. that do not really want us to leave. There's so many. You, you can take the Chancellor at the moment. He's a Remainer. Yeah. And what decisions? What there. decisions do you think he should have taken? I didn't say he would made any wrong ones at the moment. You but did. He, you said he, the problem with this country is we've got too many people taking decisions who who didn't want us to leave. I, mean, I just reminded you what you literally said forty-seven seconds ago. So, what decisions has he taken that are evidence of the fact that he doesn't really want to leave? Well, he he hasn't done anything, has he? What should he have done? Well, I'm, I'm not in charge of the Treasury. Well, why so do you keep saying things are. about people on subjects that you have absolutely... Let me yeah, be I polite. Know. You don't yeah. know what you're talking about, do you? I do. Go on, then. I, I, know, what, I know what I want. What do you want? What, what do you want? What do you want? I want to continue to not be in the EU. Why? Why? Because I think they're a corrupt organisation. Give me some evidence of that. I'll give you evidence. That go on. The evidence is what you see. Yeah, go right? on. What, where, what can you where's see? Where's our car industry? What? Where's our car industry? Well, it's just hit the lowest level since before the Mini was produced. Why? Because, we're well, there's supply chain issues, but a large part of it is the fact that we're not in the single market anymore. So our biggest no, market... No, no, because we never sold cars in the single market. Right. I mean, this is a little so bit like... Do cars... The only people that prospered, Jesus. right, yeah. about vehicle manufacturing yeah. in the EU and why we was in the EU was Germany yeah. and France. So why is it worse now than it was when we were in it? Well, because we haven't had a chance to rebuild it. We've how had a pandemic and a war on. And how are we going to... So have Germany. Eh? So have Germany. Yeah, and Germany... Failed to support Ukraine. So why is their car industry taxes. doing so much better than ours then? Why? It's because over the 40 years that we've been in there, they've yeah. been systematically bringing our uh, Go on. industry down to nothing. How, how did they do that? By, by selling off the... Assets that we've got in this country, like car, why don't we... So Germany sold off... Uh, how did Germany cars? sell off British assets? Well, they bought fucking BM... Uh, sorry about that. We you just have to dump that because you swore. I'm just going to take you back. So how did Germany sell off things that were owned by Britain? Well, they bought um, the Mini. Well, then, right? that, then that is then owned by the Germans, Germany. isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. don't think this is going very well, and I don't think you and I are ever going to meet. Can you just... But we uh, don't, because you're, you're such a staunch um, Remainer yeah. that you will not accept... Well, what do you anything. think I should accept? What is the thing you've said to me that you think I should dwell on after we say goodbye? 
Well, there is, there, there is nothing I can say that you will. But I promise you there is. I, I've asked you several times for some evidence, some examples. Well, I've told you evidence. Where's our car industry? But that... OK. Right? Yeah. Where's our four transits be, built now? Yeah. Where are they built? Do you, do you know? Have a great day, mate. Yeah, you see, you get a difficult question and you don't answer. Oh, sorry, it. what do you want me to tell you? Where are our four transits built? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Where are our four transits built? Turkey. Yeah. Well, there, there is a facility in Turkey that builds four transits. That's not in the there European... There is one in this country no Turkey's, more. Turkey's, build an, uh, Turkey's, Ford in this Turkey's not in the... Turkey's not in the... Turkey's all sold them off. Turkey's not in the European Union. No, but it was funded by the EU. So what's your, well, what's your point here then? We're leaving the European Union... And somehow the transits will come back to Britain, will they? Well, I doubt it. It's probably too late now. So why are you talking about transits? Because this is uh, what I'm talking about, is the systematic destruction of this country by the EU. OK. And, and what's the first signs of things getting better? Well, I've never been so well off. OK. How and I'm just a humble coach driver. OK. You're not affected by the cost of living crisis, 16.5% inflation on food? I'm affected by it, but I can live through it. Energy costs going looking good? Yeah, but I, I can remember when my mortgage yeah. was in double figures. Interest rates at historic highs yesterday. And I can remember that as well. All right, mate. Have a great weekend. When mate. I bought my first house... Yeah. You know, it goes through, it goes through things like that, but they're brought on by things not in the control of this country. Yeah, are they? Yeah. Well, are they? It's the war that's causing it. But not, ev not every government. country's been affected by the war. Every single country. So we come every out bottom. Single countries it is. Oh, I've done my best. Right, I but think. we're doing more for most of them than some of them. With, with what? But the Germans didn't want to get involved, did they? Because they're scared of Russia. Right. Hungary vetoed uh, uh, the oil so that they can still get theirs. What, what, why do you, why, know, what, what do you think? These European countries just, just, don't what? care about anyone else except themselves. So why would we want to leave that then? Because what's the point in being in there? There's someone that's you just told me they really look after themselves. Would, why would we want to leave that? The EU is run by a non-elected group of people. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. OK, Andy. Right, you can believe what you want. No, it right? doesn't work like and, that, and though, does it? Because I can't, I can't believe what... I can't believe... I can't, for example... Only okay. rubber stamps what the executive want. Yeah. We're not going to get there, now, are we? Tell, tell me what the EU's done for us. Good Lord. Honestly... Yeah. Okay. What the EU has done for us? Yeah. Okay. Um, we had, Freedom of movement. We had frictionless trade with the largest market on the planet. We could sell. Well, we, we could sell into. We could sell extra. into. We could sell into Germany as easily as we could sell into we into can Birmingham. Sell into Germany almost as easily. We could now. buy from. The, well, that's just again. That's just not. That, that's just the, not true, the though. I can't. I mean, listen. You can say things that aren't true, and I can politely acknowledge them. But if you ask me a question, I, I, and I give you an answer to it, you can't then say rhubarb or the Earth is flat. Right. So. What you're saying is we had a trade agreement. <sighs> yeah, yes, Andy. Right. So why wouldn't the EU give us a trade agreement now? Because we left. They did. We've got a withdrawal agreement, but we don't have a free trade agreement in the way that we did before. We don't have the no, indivisible four freedoms. Before. Pardon? Nothing's the same as what it was before. No, it's, it's worse. What? What? You've just you've just you've worse, just acknowledged that it's worse. You've just said, why didn't they give us what we had before? You don't yeah. realise it, but you've just acknowledged that what we had before was better than what we have now, and you rang in to claim that what we have now is better than what we had before. Should, tell me, you can see that at least. Well, yes, in a way. So why didn't uh, they give us what we had before? You tell me. Well, well, why didn't they? Because we're not in the EU. 
But other countries are not in the EU and they've got free trade agreements. But they have freedom of movement. If you're thinking about Switzerland or Norway, they've signed up to the rules that the European Union... Why would we want freedom of movement? In order to have the free trade that you just mourned right. the passing of. I mean, I, 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 I'm going to have to not... You, you, they insist that we have to have people yeah. coming into this country so there it that is. we can't control. Yeah. How's, it go? How's that going now? How's the immigration control working out for you at the minute? Because there's been too many Remainers putting their oar in and stopping it. Too many do-gooders turning around and saying, we can't do this, like, we can't like, do that. Like who? In, in a government populated by Priti Patel, Suella Braverman, Dominic Raab, who, who are the people that have stopped you from getting the immigration policy you wanted? Well, I, uh, the, the civil servants, I don't know. But every time we say we're going to do something, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't who do says this. that? Who says that? I have to. I have to take a break. Yeah, I'm nine minutes. I'm nine minutes late for the break. I, I, I will think about transits, and you think about why we can't have the deal that we had before. All right, deal. Deal. Love to the family. Nobody wants to discuss it. This is the answer. This is the first person from the Labour side that I've heard speak with any energy about it. And I absolutely agree. This model is costing us about 4% of our GDP um, every single year. Add that to what's happened with uh, COVID-19, which is another £300 billion pound bill. Uh, and then, of course, there's Ukraine. The Ukraine piece is concerning to me because it actually exposes just how volatile our own economy is to international handwinds, as indeed Brexit and did COVID as well. But we seem to ignore that and only focus from a domestic perspective. I've called for some time that we put effort into seeing those grain ships leave Odessa mm. to get to international markets. Just a fifth of the grain is getting out. And we've now realizing very late in the day that Ukraine is the breadbasket for yeah. Europe and indeed beyond. Get that grain out. You help reduce the prices. It'll help the Ukrainian economy. It'll help Africa completely. But most importantly, it also helped Europe, including the UK, tackle the cost of living crisis. And there is um, no plan to do Ella, any of that. I see only Brexit here on the panel. Do you want to address that? Please, yes. Lord save us. As the only representative of the you know majority of the Brexit public. Well, I am too, public. but I, I can't get involved. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't how's want to rehash. I don't, it, tell us how's it going. I don't want to rehash this um, the, the Brexit argument, but what I will say is it's pretty sick making the relish with which politicians enjoy looking, you know, describing and and rubbing our nose in how um, how bad they say it's all going. I don't think any Brexiteer with you know two brain cells to rub together thinks genuinely that we're in a rosy you know sunlit so uplift, whatever it is. So offer constructive change and to where has, you would take hang on a minute, That's Tobias. the question. Hang that on a minute, is the Tobias. question. I haven't been in Westminster making the calls. I'll tell you, if I had, there'd be a lot of you things that were different. You just said you're a Brexiteer. Yeah, but we're I don't Brexiteers. have any... We all are living the... with Brexit. Hang on. I'm saying this model of Brexit's not working, Hang so on. tell us. How do we well, change? Well, let, let us speak. I know. I'm used to Remainer shouting, I mean, don't worry about it. I'm not a Remainer. The, I'm a post-Brexiteer. The... We're all post-Brexiteers. But... The fact that you Tobias, label people... let her speak, please. <laughs> But, you know, the thing is, I don't, well, as I was saying, I don't think anyone thinks we're living in a one that I've just described how bad the cost of living crisis is. No one thinks that things are, are going well. <laughs> the point is, I'm not sat in the House of Commons making uh, policy or making law. None of the, part of the Brexit vote, the excitement of it, was giving more democracy to ordinary people, to your average Joe and Jane. And unfortunately, what this government has done, and with no help from the opposition car from the sidelines, is make a complete hames of it, has made a total mess of any kind of potential that we could have had. That was all... By spending... <laughs> hang on a minute. By spending... I know you can laugh. No, but it was always going to be how, the Brexit is on, but when it didn't work, no. ah, well, it could have worked if you'd done, if you'd have done that. So what would you do God, differently? The scorn in this room is unbelievable. No, and actually, to be, to be serious for a second... I'm curious. To be serious for a You're second... You're not very curious, because you won't let us speak. The things... The things that could have been differently is that you could have had politicians take seriously the exciting prospect of voting citizens wanting to be more involved in politics, looking at thing, big things like sovereignty, big things like democracy, talking about how we could change British politics for the better. You know, that take back control slogan might have been slandered as some kind of ridiculous Nigel Farage side of the bus, whatever it is. And you can go down that route if you want. Or actually, if you if you cared about, as you seem to opine like you do, about the average, um, you know, person who, you know, you say, oh, it's so bad, they're going to food banks, oh, it's so terrible, everyone's a hard time. If you actually cared about their 
uh, political prospects and the future of their political lives, you would have taken seriously the challenge that Brexit set, set the British political class. Unfortunately, it has been squandered. And I'm, I'm miserable about that. But what I haven't, will I what I will not accept is that it's somehow our fault, that it's the fault of voters, voters in Bolton or in nobody Tottenham. Nobody's saying that. The 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 nobody has said that. Nobody has said that. You are putting the words we into people's yeah. mouths and, and, then, and then saying that there are views for and they are not. This is ridiculous. For you to sit here and scoff and say, I'm not scoffing. I want to know what you do better. I'm still asking this, but it's going to shut up again. I want to know what you're I'm going to tell you all to shut up because we have, to, we have to go to the news. Why was the Chelsea Flower Show targeted? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for having me on. Um, I mean, I just want to take issue with the previous speaker. Obviously, it was good that they came on the show, but they were saying that the Chelsea Flower Show doesn't take money from the likes of BP and so on. And yet the sponsors of this garden were ultimately the Royal Canadian Bank, the Royal Bank of Canada, who owned the company that sponsored it. And the Royal Bank of Canada have got the dubious title of now I, being the world's biggest fossil fuel fund. All right, I, so this is the worst, heinous greenwashing all right. ever. Why, why did you target the Chelsea Flower Show, though? Well, one reason is because this appalling greenwashing is going on at something which is supposed to be, you know, a joyful event talking about growing and flowers, etc. And as a, a plant lover, a gardener and a grower myself, Nick, it's very, very clear, isn't it? Um, we're carrying on as if nothing is going on here. And, and the last uh, guy you had on was talking about how the show is supporting recycling. We cannot recycle our way out of this disaster. We are in but an your, existential you, crisis. Your colleagues attacked a sustainable garden. They didn't attack anything, Nick. They put biodegradable well, corn They could be charged with, with criminal... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so if, if they face potential charges of criminal damage, I think I can call that an attack. What would you call it? I would call it a desperate peaceful plea Well, that doesn't help. exist and in noticed, the statute books, so we'll, we'll deal with criminal damage. Well, I noticed, I noticed, Nick, that in the clip that you played before you had the previous speaker and myself on, you didn't play the full clip, which towards the end included some people applauding and cheering oh, and saying, Oh, give me well a done. break, please, no, no, Zoe, come on. The, balance, the majority of people are absolutely appalled by these stunts. That's not Why true. Why do, don't, that's don't true. tell me what's true and what's not true because a few people might have cheered. <laughs> okay, the reality well, is, the reality is expressed by the people shouting for security by calling your college i'm sorry to use colleagues words such as prats and just asking them to stop they speak for the majority of people please because a couple of people might have joined in and said well done don't delude yourself that you have growing support the stunts that you are pulling such as the snooker the chelsea flower show the various bridges in london i'm delighted to say public support is draining away from a very very relevant cause and you are putting yourself on a peninsula and you deserve it you are are at odds with the public, will you, for the sake of sanity, stop? We will stop when the government Good. make a statement. We will stop when the, the government, government make a statement. Do you that honestly they will end think, new... Ms. Cohen, do you honestly think Rishi Sunak will think, oh my God, the Chelsea Flower Show has been attacked by orange paint or dye or whatever it is, cornstarch? I must make take action today. Are you that deluded? We're not deluded. We know that unless we cause disruptive action, you guys don't talk about the climate crisis. You don't. Bring we talk the about post... it all the time. The, no, the argument don't. is one. No, Why don't. disrupt? Why can three people choose to disrupt the enjoyment of thousands? <laughs> Nick, I'm glad you laugh. These, I'm glad you think it's funny. Did. I'm glad I you think, think it's funny, funny. because I'm... I'm sure the Royal Bank of Canada can afford it. I'm absolutely sure. But the people, the men and women who've toiled many, many hours to put that together, and the people who might like to have seen it, I, I read that some of it is now permanently damaged. I'm glad you think it's funny have because it's see... people efforts and that you've you destroyed. How much, how much did you cover the news last week that... Uh, the world's leading scientists say that we're going to go past the very dangerous 1.5 degree threshold No, why don't you answer my question first, respectfully, Ms. Cohen? Why don't you answer my question first? Why can three people, people why can three people destroy the enjoyment of thousands? And then I'll answer because your question. Because billions of people are going to be put outside the conditions that are livable in the lifetime of children. It is like a faith, isn't it? It's is like a, um, no. Can, can, can I ask it's you like finally? believing that smoking causes cancer, which can, it does. Can I ask you finally you deny if, that, Nick? if the courts actually woke up to this? And I know that one of your colleagues, Stephanie Golder, is a repeat offender. Would putting these people behind bars stop this? Do you imagine, Ms. Cohen? No, of course it won't. Oh, what do you expect God. people to do? 
when they know what's Not disrupt happening. the enjoyment of expect? thousands, that's what I expect people but, to do. But, thousands well, who attend and millions happened. who watch on TV. Sorry, a final word to you. A <laughs> final you, word to you. Have you seen what's happening in Emilia Romana in, in northern Italy at the moment? The, it, the lives. The, the, these are the, the, the fl- just, this is the flooding, just to explain to my listeners. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Tens of thousands of people have been evacuated. I recently met a lovely young woman, an Italian woman, whose family uh, mm-hmm. from that area, she had tears in her eyes when she told me that her family and their whole home are being flooded right. out and there was nothing she could do about it. Okay. What Do you think a little bit of biodegradable cornstarch on a garden funded by greenwashing fossil fuel funders is worse than that? All right. Do you Let's really what... think that, Nick? Well, let, uh, I, I, I think I've made my feelings, but I... I, I find it reprehensible that a small group of people can cause such upset to so many thousands. But we've had our discussion. I'm grateful for you coming forward. Thank you, Zoe Cohen. Do you believe that Boris Johnson misled Parliament, Claire? Good afternoon, Sanjita. Well, just listening to you before, I can tell you do, but I certainly don't. Um, I really do think this whole process lacks credibility, whichever way you look at it. It's scandalous and it's um, a slur on our democracy. Um, I've been through the evidence, you know, with a fine tooth comb um, over the last few weeks. And um, I'm just appalled, actually. I really am that it's actually got to this stage. So, yes, that's why we have been emailing or getting our members to email the MPs, the Conservative MPs, saying, pull out. It, um, you know, we don't want you to be any part of this. Um, okay, it's a I'm going to come to that in a minute. Can I, just come, can I just come back for a second? You, um, you, certainly very strong language there. You described the Privileges Committee as a slur on democracy. I would think that they would be quite outraged by that, Claire. Um, I don't actually care if they're outraged. It really, truly is. I mean... Uh, how, can it, how can it be a slur, slur on democracy well, when this is part changing. of our parliamentary process? Well, when Parliament were asked to vote on this, they didn't actually have all the facts. We know the Sue Gray report has been discredited. We know her advising barrister of that report has been discredited. They've also massively changed the goalposts. I mean, for one, let me just give you one example. Um, intent. Everyone was told it was all about Boris's intent, you know, who who defines that? What is the intent? What is the intent? Anyone who's even got a basic um, knowledge of law, you know, everyone who's seen, um, what is it, blonde ambition or something, mans rea, you've got to have intent for a crime to be committed. Mm. But they've actually changed the goalpost now. And they've said, it has he been recklessly misleading? I mean, how on earth that they've managed to get away with that? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Also, you've got to look at the actual context of. Um, Although, the... of course, sorry, you've driven, you've just drawn the parallel with law, and of course, in law, um, let me take an extreme example: manslaughter. Uh, if you're convicted of manslaughter, then that is because you have behaved recklessly. In other words, you may not have had intent, but uh, your behaviour was predictably going to end up uh, in um, the death of someone. So actually, what you seem to be questioning, Claire, and this is, I, I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm quite taken aback, what, what you seem to be suggesting uh, is that due process established um, through our parliamentary systems that has been used time and time and time again, that has never been questioned before, you're describing that as a slur on democracy. Well, and you're I'm now sorry. actually going a step further and suggesting that it should be sabotaged by by um, campaigning, as I understand it, for the four Tory MPs that sit on the Privileges Committee to withdraw. Well, I'm sorry, but um, by with your reason. Um, why is the Parliament even um, looking into this when a higher authority fined Boris for people walking into his office and singing happy birthday to him? They, he wasn't fined for attending any parties. That you know, read the 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 facts of that case, and that is a higher authority um, in the good law of our lands and the way things should be done. Um, another. So hang on, are you suggesting I- that that? Um, <sighs> professions which is let's 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 call being an mp a profession are you suggesting that employers should never have any internal disciplinary processes because that's essentially what this is so by your reasoning claire no employer in the country in the world would ever have an internal disciplinary procedure i'm not saying that i've said well, that is what you're saying rule. you're saying said- he's already been fined and therefore there's no reason to have uh, an inquiry a parliamentary inquiry 
I'm saying if you were an employer in the land, you should go with what the police have said and the police find him for a gathering of people walking into his office during the workday. It was a Thursday or Friday afternoon in between meetings in his place of work. They were all, um, you know, employees working dur- during the pandemic um, in exactly the same way as hospital staff were gathering. I was working in my newspaper Hospital staff at the time. were not having drinks and having parties and puking up on walls and breaking um, children's uh, swings. And I think, honestly, honestly, Claire, nurses and paramedics and doctors listening to you now will be deeply offended by that parallel. Well, this is another thing. The Sue Gray report at the time wasn't talking about the leadership of Boris. If you check all the dates, Boris wasn't in Downing Street for most of that time. Um, Simon Case, she was talking about Simon Case, the cabinet secretary. He was responsible for the civil servants. And I heard you on the programme before just mm. constantly saying politicians, politicians breaking the rule. Po- no, rules, I didn't politicians. say politicians, politicians it, breaking yes, the rules. I, I said I reported what has been widely reported to be fact, which is that he was fined along with Rishi Sunak. For well, attending another a birthday thing. party, it was a fixed penalty notice that was handed out to him. Uh, and I think you know that that's the case, don't you? Because if you're suggesting that isn't true, then I, 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 sorry, I'm absolutely baffled. I wrote about it at the time. I, I actually thought the police should hand him back his fine. He didn't break the rules. Um, as far as um, things go, it was a place of work. He was um, an employee working during the pandemic and it was in between business meetings. And it wasn't a party, as you've said in this programme and other people What was stated. it then? What was he actually fined for? Um, he was fined for people walking what, just standing around, was he? For doing <laughs> exactly. his job. Look, look at the photos. For walking in I'm between sorry, meetings. If you, if you think that was a party, you, you need a bit more of a life, I'm afraid. Look at the actual photos. Also, another... Have you said that to the Metropolitan up. Police, Claire? Have you <laughs> I, said to I them, you know what? I you know very what? Open about Cressida it. Dick, Mark Crowley, <laughs> what you need is more of a life rather oh. than uh, conducting uh, a police investigation uh, another, into the Prime Minister area. of this country, breaking his own rules. <laughs> Have you tried well, that one with them? Oh, well, I did write about it at the time and I basically said just that. But another area is... Hang um, on a minute. Can I just go back to the the really key thing here? You're campaigning, if I understand this correctly, to uh, get Andy Carter, Alberto Costa, Sir Charles Walker and Sir Bernard Jenkin, all Tory MPs sitting on the Privileges Committee, to withdraw. Is that right? Yeah, we... We believe that this investigation is nothing but a politically motivated... Isn't that anti-democratic, Claire? No, it's it's totally. They shouldn't they shouldn't be sitting on this kangaroo court. It's well, ridiculous. Well, they should be sitting the, on it because it is a cross. Hang on a minute. It's a co- it's a cross bench committee, right? And the reason it is a cross bench committee, and there are four Tories uh, on it, so that's the majority of seven. The reason it's cross bench is because we trust our MPs to be able to do the right thing in this process, and that is to lift themselves out of party politics, look at the evidence um, and come to a conclusion as to whether or not Boris Johnson uh, knowingly or unknowingly misled Parliament. Are you suggesting these four Tory MPs cannot do that? Well, the greatest lawyer in the land, Lord Panic, who is a global superstar in law, um, he's ruled that it's absolutely shouldn't be happening. Um, Who's being paid I'm for not... by Boris Johnson to defend him? Well, and uh, me said, and you, you are said, paying that. Said, and so are all of the taxpayers of this country. Well, in exactly the same um, breath then, why isn't Rishi being held to the same account? I mean... Hang on, just just answer the LB's, question. I just answer the yeah. question. Is it not fundamentally anti-democratic that you are asking four Tory MPs to withdraw from the Privileges Committee that is investigating Boris Johnson? I don't think that's anti-democratic at all. I think it's anti-democratic when... We elect MPs of Parliament via... Dem- via are- via a general election to represent our interests, which is what Andy Carty, Carter, Alberto Costa, Charles Walker and Bernard Jenkin, Jenkins are doing, right? Do you agree that they were elected by Tory voters to sit in when, Parliament and part of their duties they... is to sit on this Privileges Committee and to do the right thing? When Parliament voted, for this Privileges Committee, they didn't know all the facts. We've already, I've already just been through this. But they Sue can Gray sit through the evidence, Claire. 
That's the whole well, point. This is it. Let's wait to see what the evidence is on Wednesday. So then the why are you on... trying to undermine and subvert it by asking them to pull out? Well, we do know that they've seen a lot of the evidence behind the scenes. They and know it looks what's terrible going on. They know... for Boris Johnson, doesn't it? They, they know that at the time when they were asked to sit on this privileged, privileged committee, they weren't in receipt of all the evidence then. So that is, I mean, literally, it is just a kangaroo court. Do you do you want to have our um, country being ruled by these sort of things? It's absolutely Claire, this is not a kangaroo court. This is a set of MPs who have been democratically elected to sit on a cross-party committee to examine the evidence that will be before them, and they will then reach a conclusion. Well, also, if you have gone through and done as much research as I have, you will have gone through all the Hansard records. You would have looked at every single little bit of, you know, speech that was said in the Houses of Parliament. Boris was asked specific questions about specific dates. And he and kept changing his story. Absolutely. That, that is a slur from you. No, That's it's not a slur from me. I watched true. it. I saw it. First, he said that he was not aware of any parties. Then he said he'd be outraged if there were some parties. Then it turned out that he'd just been fined by the Met. In fact, and he was at one of these parties. And then he went on to say, absolutely, Sanjita, he didn't mislead you, Parliament. So, Gisa, that is actually um, It's Sangeeta, by the way. Um, he, I can go through them now. September, um, December the eighteenth. Um, no, the please 20th, don't. But listen, I mean, you made your you made your point very eloquently, Claire. But um, yes. So listen, uh, my final question to you is the issue of sanctions. Right. This is where I have a real problem with it uh, because it would it would transpire that if he is found guilty of misleading Parliament, then. If he is suspended for less than 10 days, he will just walk straight back in on the 10th or 11th day and carry on as usual. If he is suspended for more than 10 days, uh, that might trigger a by-election. But in the end, um, any of these sanctions will have to be put before Parliament and MPs will vote for it. Um, I think I know what the answer is, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What do you think should happen in relation to sanctions? Do you know what? If he's found guilty, wrongly found guilty, it will in perpetuity, it's going to restrict the ability of any MP to answer any question in the Commons from here on in. I mean, we have got to have the right thing done here. Um, I've seen the evidence. The people will see the evidence on Wednesday. Boris did not mislead Parliament. We've been through it with a fine tooth comb. It really is just a witch hunt from the left, from Labour. I mean, I... Can I ask you something? If you believe it's such a witch, witch hunt, if you believe you have evidence that he did not mislead Parliament, what are you scared of? What are you, I, I'm what are you scared. scared I well, want you him are. back you in place. You are scared because, because you're, asking, you're, you're trying to dissemble this. The, the, the parliament. Hang on a minute. Uh, you're trying to dissemble the committee by demanding that these four Tory MPs pull off it. So you are scared, right? So what are you scared of? Because you keep saying over and over again in this interview that you've seen evidence that will clear Boris Johnson. Well, then let that evidence be put before the committee. And if you are right, he will be cleared. And if you are wrong, he will be found guilty of misleading Parliament. I tell you what I'm scared of. I'm scared of socialism getting into number 10. I lived in Los Angeles for the last 14 years before the pandemic. I've seen what happens when you allow socialists in the door. Um, I want a conservative government. I believe in this conservative government. And I believe Boris is our true leader. And um, I, I do respect Rishi. Of course, I respect okay, Rishi. OK, let's not I, talk about Rishi. This isn't about Rishi. Claire <laughs> Bullifan, but good try, though. Claire Bullivant, editor of Conservative Post. I tell you, you must be the first person to ever come on this programme and called Andy Carter, Alberto Costa, Sir Charles Walker and Sir Bernard Jenkin socialists. Thank you very much indeed for your time. No Labour government has left office with unemployment lower than when it came into office. So if you want a stable, strong economy, you need to have consistency in the Conservative government. What the Labour Party would have to do when they lose... Uh, the election when, as next opposed to year, if uh, yes, is is to look at the, the the how they manage economies because the history of the Labour Party is they get into power, uh, they, uh, they 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 survive on the coattails of the previous Conservative government for one or two years. So things look quite good, <laughs> mm. uh, and then their spending gets out of control. Uh, the economy tanks. They lose the election, uh, and the economy unemployment has already rises. Tanked. You see, I, I, and then, I'm and then thinking about what's happened over the last few years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hang on. First, 13, 13 years, and there are going to be very few people who can look you in the face on the doorstep in Bognor and say, I'm better off than I was in 2010. 
We have been through some major crises. Yeah. There's no question about that. COVID was a once in a century crisis affecting this country and the world. We borrowed 450. So COVID is the new winter of discontent. Isn't it? Well, we borrowed 450 billion pounds, and we were able to borrow it because of the stewardship of the economy leading up to that point after the banking crisis. And the capital markets were confident enough to lend us 450 billion pounds, and you know they're going to get it back. And but because of that, they, of course, they weren't we, after Truss's budget in September. They were. Well, they? I'm not saying that was a great time. <laughs> but what I am saying is that Rishi Sunak is there. Jeremy Hunt is there. They're stabilising the economy. Uh, we did have the fastest growth in the G7 in 2021. But you don't know. In 2022, we've got the lowest now. No, but we will recover. We, all the all the uh, hallmarks, all the all the fundamentals are there in place. We've got low unemployment. We've got inflation coming down. Uh, we've got a competent government. Inflation went up last month. Yes, but it's, it's forecast by the OBR to be 2.9% in the fourth quarter of this year. Do you seriously believe that's going to happen? I do, uh, provided, of course, we don't give in to pay settlements where people are demanding 35% pay increases. Of course, that would blow inflation apart. But, but the point about we were discussing the Labour Party, I just think if the Labour Party lose the election, they've got to look at uh, how they manage economies because their history throughout the history of the Labour Party is the damage they do to the British so economy. Under the Blair government the economy was well managed I mean then the well, the financial crash came I mean we can argue about sort of things that we w might have done differently but it generally was well managed the financial crash came along Gordon Brown was seen by everybody outside this country as almost the saviour of the world economy it doesn't really f fit into no, it does, the narrative. Because, well, th th there was the banking crash of course but also the way they had spent during that period meant that when we came into office in 2010 we had a budget deficit an annual budget deficit of 156 billion pounds what a is year. it now uh, it's it, it it's uh, a lot more we have been through the covid crisis and we're trying to deal with that but the, that was 11 percent of gdp that we were spending in each year we had to bring that down and because of that we were able to borrow during the covid crisis now okay. we um, right, let's repeat the question. If the Starmer project fails and he doesn't win the general election, what next for Labour, Jeremy Corbyn? Well, before I say that, just Nick, I wonder which planet you're on at the moment, <laughs> mate. I really do. Inflation, well over 12%. Food inflation, much more. More food banks in this country than branches. Jeremy, you're taking your pen. Sorry, right the it's a very good pen. <laughs> <laughs> Given to me by a trade union. Um, and... Um, you're suggesting that somehow the economy is doing well. Well, if you ask anyone who is worse off than they were 10 years ago, ask anyone like a teacher or a rail worker, a mail worker, what's happened to their wages, they won't be very, very happy. And you cannot say that wages have caused this inflation because wa wages have actually fallen over the last 10 years. And if you actually got round the table with all the unions involved in the current disputes and paid them properly, you would actually have more money being spent in the economy, which would help investment anyway, and you would have a lot less poverty around and a lot less people claiming universal credit or top-ups in order to get through. Now, for the Labour Party, I think the important thing is to offer a real alternative. And I saw an analysis in the iPaper last week which said one of the problems was many of the public don't fully understand what Labour's economic strategy is because they're so busy presenting themselves as being very good at managing the economy. Surely we've got to look at the structural problems. The structural problems are historic lack of investment, structural problems are historic lack of training, historic problems of underpayment of teachers and medical workers, many of whom, if they can, emigrate or they go and do something else, even though they've been <coughs> trained but at public expense. You put forward that case in 2019. I put forward that case in 2019. Yep. We, of course we lost the election, I fully understand that, but there are many reasons, one of which was... Um, issues around Brexit, I'm sure you'd understand. Um, but individually, interestingly, the policies, particularly ones on public ownership of um, mail, rail, water and energy, were actually all publicly supported and still are. I think what we need is a much clearer alternative in the election. We're looking now at record health spending, uh, you know, regardless of whichever party's ever been in power, looking at really huge record health spending. You know, in that sort of 200 billion
billion a year uh, you know, a, a ballpark now in terms of health spending in the in the UK. Uh, that has been a massive focus. Uh, one of the things that he, um, we, we've been looking at as well, and he, and he focused a lot of this, in fact he did mention it, and this was I think one of the big things that he focused on as health secretary and as, and as chancellor But there were uh, 10 years well, of has, cuts to health spending, just forgive me, there were 10 no, years no, of cuts that's, to that's, health that's spending. No, that's, that's not true. Well, compa- that's just not true. From, that, that, from, that just, uh, from the point at which Labour were in power, the way that spending in the NHS... I mean, you, you may think this was wasteful spending, you can tell me if you think so. No, that, it that, was going up and then started to tail off and has gone down. No, it's, no that's, that's just not true. Health spending has gone up significantly the amount, in real terms. I'm to, yes, OK, I get, in, I get what in, you're in, saying. In, in, in real terms. It really has gone up in real terms. The, 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 I think what you're, what you're saying is the, the rises weren't as rapid uh, as they had been previously. They weren't previously. as full, they weren't as big. Uh, but, Which is but why that's, there were cuts but, to that, hospital not, budgets. But that's, but no, that's, that, that, there, there are, there are not. There have been, been there no not, cuts to the health service. The, the, the health service saying? has not has not been cut since the since no, it, it really hasn't. If you look at those numbers, I, I will I will what I will do is I will I will okay. tell you I will post on Twitter the and the, the, the NHS budgets for the last for the last uh, for the last uh, thirteen years, so you can see in both in real terms and in cash terms what we've actually delivered. Because Please I think do. it's really important uh, to do to to be clear about that. We we are seeing greater demands. I think that's one of the things we've got an aging population. Uh, obviously, there are new drugs and things like that which come on. Which are expensive and we do need to pay for, um, but no, there has been a, a real terms increase in the well, NHS budget. Tweet and that I just and wanted I'll to come back to you on another time. I will. I, I just, I just wanted to mention though, the one thing he really concentrated on was that long term NHS workforce plan, mm. and that is something which I think is incredibly important. It's the first time in the NHS's history since it was founded in the nineteen forties that we're going to have that workforce plan, and that's going to see basically an increase of over two thirds in the numbers of doctors being trained. We've already seen record numbers of nurses and doctors. In in the NHS, and we would need, but we need to get that pipeline through. One of the things we'd historically done as a country, actually, is probably rely too much on taking doctors and nurses from other countries in, and um, and actually, we need to train more of them ourselves. And getting that long-term plan for the NHS workforce right is is a, a really important uh, part of that as well. But one of the things I think has probably not been mentioned as much in the uh, in, in the, in the wash-up from the budget so far has been around those big changes which we're actually making to. Uh, pension schemes as well. We've got around 30,000 pension schemes across the country at the moment. Over time, we want to see those consolidated into a smaller number, probably around 1,000 of them. That will reduce fees uh, within them. It also means that they're stronger individually as well. So in the long term for people, that will also mean two things. One, it means those pension companies will be able to invest in new, smaller businesses in the UK. One of the big problems where we see some of our good new entrepreneurs in the UK then move to America to get funding is because uh, those smaller pension funds cannot take the that level of risk appetite that a much larger fund could as part of a really balanced portfolio. So that'll be really helpful there. And with the reduction in numbers um, of funds, we'll also see uh, probably around up to £1,000 a year extra for people uh, when they're paying into their pensions uh, you know, at the end of their lives as well in their private the, the, pension. So I think that's that's a big long-term reform as well, which is something I think we've needed for some time. The OBR today is painting, the op- Office of Budget Responsibility is painting something of a sorry picture of the next decade even. We've got house prices falling, again, good for some, bad for others, house prices falling, uh, inflation, um, yes, falling, but continuing for longer than they expected at these middle rates. Um, so that means prices will still be going up, less acutely, but still going up. And, and that will be felt very much by the poorest. And they talk about the level of growth, which, again, the Chancellor was framing in a very particular way. They frame it rather differently and rather more negatively. Um, how does the Conservative Party have a hope after 13 years of convincing people that their money the economy, their future, their thriving is safe in your hands when it comes to the next election. Well, what I'd say on the economy is that last, first of all, let's um, look at the, what the OBR's overall picture was, and that will that is that growth will be higher overall over the period than it was uh, in its previous prediction. But I think one of the key things as well is we look. Let's look back what's happened over the last year or so, and that we were told um, by a lot of the international organisations, the IMF, the OECD, all these acronyms that uh, people talk about, that the UK economy were going to recession. Uh, actually, we've overperformed significantly 
greatly overperformed that. And we've done that over a number of years now, a number of predictions we've overperformed. But the, even in their predictions going forwards, uh, the OBR's predictions, over the term, we'll actually see higher growth than we'd had previously. But that's why those big uh, reforms that I talked about in terms of um, that, that long-term plan, those, those real changes uh, in how we encourage business to invest for the long term, um, those are really important because the only way we're going to drive productivity over the longer term is by making those uh, changes that the Chancellor announced today. That's 110 individual changes, but some of them, like the, uh, like the one on being able to write down capital investment, is incredibly, incredibly important uh, to that plan. Uh, another was around how we ensure that we have uh, one of the best schemes in the world to get ex uh, external investors uh, into the UK as well. So I think those are really important. And, and, I, and, and, and so I think you, you're, whether it's personal taxation, uh, whether that's for the self-employed people, it's a reduction there in self-employed um, uh, uh, tax f uh, in terms of national insurance, uh, or whether it's people in work, it's a reduction there, whether it's pensioners um, who are seeing a, a good rise, uh, and whether it's that long-term plan. I think on all areas, the, gov the Chancellor's really uh, laid out a positive package uh, for the country today. Uh, I think there's... In, 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 and I think it's so important that when we're looking at the economy, we do take proper long-term decisions because uh, we know what happens uh, if uh, okay. if you if you don't. You know, if you uh, uh, you know, we, we well, saw it when we came into office. You know, and one of those interesting things announced today as well was the fact that he's going to look at that final NatWest share sale. You know, it was that it was that financial crisis back in two thousand and eight, uh, and after Gordon Brown said he'd abolished boom and bust, that meant we had to nationalise. <laughs> You're not blaming now, Gordon Brown for no, everything, we had to, are you? Are you really? Are you, are no, uh, no, I'm. Right, <laughs> not, not, not blaming him for everything. I mean, oh, not, not everything. Not responsible, no. not responsible for war in the Middle East. Give me but, a you know, he is, yeah. but it was very, you know, that, when we, when we nationalised... Oh, you're making uh, you know, yourself we had look to silly now. Come on. Bringing well, Gordon Brown into this. No, 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 just... Uh, Sheila, I mean, this is a really important point. I mean, you might have missed this from the budget, but we're going to sell the NatWest. That was bought at the height of the financial crisis back in 2008. And it's, and it's some of those unwindings that have taken a very long time for us to do. And I think it's really important that we get those companies uh, eventually, you know, now as long as the uh, conditions are there, right off the government's balance sheet as well, uh, because that's, that's what we've got to and fund it, uh, do and, in and, the And pour it into public services, I hope. Thank Richard Holden, I well, have to uh, leave it there. I have to leave it there. No, thank you so much for your time, Sheila, right. and I'll I give you a tweet forward. later on. You seem to be rather dismissive and say that the fact that we were being taken out of the ECHR was only going to be uh, a problem for um, immigrants, migrants, call them what you will. Um, well, and you, you seem, therefore, to imply that it didn't have any impact on the rest of us, the won't. rights that we would lose as a result of that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nothing. nothing to but it, but it, what, Nick, you've got to, we, we, I'm sure you know there are only two countries in the world that have withdrawn from the ECHR, mm -hmm. and they're Russia and Belarus. Mm, right. Just, do, do, we want to, do we want to be in a oh, situation For the love of like all that's holy. Are you saying that so the, the, the mathematical equation equals... Remove yourself from ECHR equals you become Russia. Come no, on. what I'm saying is it's no. What I'm saying, and you are being very dismissive about this, Nick. Yeah. Um, this is these these rights under the European Court of Human Rights apply to all of us in everyday life. When have they They've helped taken you? Taken away from us. When have they helped you? <laughs> they help me because I can ring you up and say things like this. And you honestly think... They help, they help all of us. You, Nick, on, the, you the, honestly... The ECHR, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. You're, you're telling me that if we were to exit that court, you wouldn't be able to ring me or one of my colleagues. Come on. I'm not saying that, but oh, what I'm saying sorry, is I'm that we've lost the right. We have lost the right. You, you are. I, I don't know why. Is it because it's got the word European at the front of it? Oh, Do you be, decide that it's a bad so, thing? Listen to look at my last name. Of course, I like Europe. I love Europe. My dad, Nick, my dad you took us. You, you campaigned. You campaigned very vociferously to campaign. take away my European rights. You've um, taken away my rights as a European citizen, well, and now you want to take that, away my rights under the ECHR. I, I think you'll find out. And, and come on, you, you've got to be that. straight, Nick. You were wrong on Brexit, and you're wrong on this one. Um, I don't know that I was wrong on Brexit. Certainly, it's not the Brexit. <laughs> Certainly it's Where not have the you Bre been living for the last C six years, Nick? Certainly it's not the Brexit. Where have you been living? On, you let, don't let think finish, you were wrong Tim, on Brexit? Tim, let me finish. This is not... I totally agree this is not the Brexit I voted for. I absolutely agree. Ah, uh, which one did you vote for, Nick? The one that which I hope, one was it? The one that I hope would have been carried out, but unfortunately we've been through so many prime ministers which, which one was it, Nick? What the, oh, no, let, I'm not doing that Brexit row again. I'm sorry, no, I'll just wait. No, 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 I won't. I will absolutely accept... I will absolutely accept that I doubt that anybody, even Jacob... No, 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 no. I doubt that even Jacob rees 
Louis Smog is, thinks that this is the Brexit you vote for. I am not going to do the Brexit row. This is not LBC 2016. I just cannot bring myself to bloody well do that. What I will debate with you, though, is the ECHR. I'm very happy to do that. Well, and, and you I would, probably... And you I, probably no, no, I, uh, currently, it's the Nick Ferrari show. It's not the Tim from Leatherhead show. Are you, you going, do that. You no, talk it's not, over people. No, here we go. And it's nobody can hear what so, I... No, no. So, so, so the way it works is... You come on and you make some very interesting points and I respond and we have a conversation. Now, can we continue along those lines? We Great. Can. Now, tell me how, I will try again, I will try again, tell me how I'm in any way endangered or your life is endangered or any of our families or friends if we were to leave the ECHR. What is the point in having people phone your programme if you what, won't let them talk? What, what, you tell just me talk how, over them. You tell get me how their lives, you feel uncomfortable tell, about. Tell me how Somebody them, presses a button hold on. that proves that you're wrong and you tell don't me, like it. No, you you are, you're it. going you to air at the moment. The truth. Tim, you're you going to... Face Tim, the truth, can you me? can't handle you the can't. truth. We have guns on the... What is it? We defend ourselves? I can't even remember the chat. I'll try one last time. One last You'd time. You'd like to Pli- live under oh, a military junta, oh, right? We have, we have, well, it depends who ran it. If I could, yes. If I could be... No, the there we go. You see? Yeah. There we go. Dead you right. say that in jest, Nick, that but there's always a little hint of truth in all of that, isn't there? No, I can assure you there's not. Uh, I, have, I have actually enjoyed our conversation. I'm really sorry we can't debate it, because for you to suggest I hate anything with European in the title is palpable nonsense when you think about it. Hello, sorry to bother you. <laughs> You're um, not bothering us, Bob. We no, ask, no, we ask no. people to vote in, so no, don't worry no, about that. I'm going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Oh, dear, OK. Right. Now, I'm just an ordinary lad. Yeah. Worked hard all of my life. Took my kids to, I don't know if I can say it, Clivero. They had a private um, place there where my daughter went. Right. Well, people to me at the moment, I'm, I'm 57, OK? People mm. to me... Uh, want, want, want. They want their next flicks. They want their new super duper phones. They want their new BMWs or Audis A3s. They want, they want. And then they expect everybody else to help them out. Well, you have to pull, not, not everybody, don't get me wrong, not everybody, but you have to pull your belt in and do without things to do what you have to do. But, Bob, and like the average childcare cost is 14 grand. You're not going to be able to, you can cut back your Netflix all you like. You're not going to be able to afford it. Listen, I. I was just working on the bins, right? In Clivero, yeah. With the council wages, and the council wages are very, very poor. And yet, I could do a private school. But things have changed. But things have changed. I mean, when was that, Bob? Uh, she's twenty-three now. So when were you? When were you doing that? In uh, well, my average wage was about two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, but when? So when you, was this? Uh, I moved up north in twenty. To, uh, 2000, I think she was 2000. six months. Yeah, to about 20, 23 years. The housing about, costs are so much more expensive than it was. That, you know, things have changed. Like, it's not that easy. My, don't laugh. My poll tax was dearer in Clipper than what it was downtown. Well, yeah, okay. I, yeah, of course. There's yeah, always so going to be some variations. But, that's but, it. So but, the how, variations. But, but housing costs are massively increased in the last 20 years, both in house price well, costs yes. and rents in relative yes. terms. So, but so it's not the same. They still want their good phones. They still want this. Oh, they come still on, want Bob. That. Like you know, Bob, you can you can get a, look if you if your average cost is fourteen grand, right, for a childcare place, you can have a rubbish phone. You can have yes, no Netflix. Exactly, I did. Well, okay, I fine, did. yeah, but well, smartphones weren't around then. But all right, like oh, you know, I know. I know well, but, no, no, tell a lie, mate. I had a phone because I was doing Continental beforehand. Okay, uh, but my so point I is, what I'm saying to you, what, what I'm saying to you is, you can cancel your Netflix, whatever that is, eight quid a month. Yeah. You can get a yeah. cheap phone or whatever. It ain't going to amount to fourteen grand. I know, but that you have to pull your strings in. Yeah, but what <laughs> to allow you to do it? Yeah, but what I, I had to. I wasn't on mega money. I, I I had a cheap little run around car what I bought from the auction for five hundred quid. I run that until it got on its knees and, and I worked my backside off and that's what we've got to do. But is you it not possible, Bob? Expect. Is it not possible, Bob, that there's something wrong that whatever what you're basically saying is that individual agency matters is most. Is it not possible that the structure doesn't matter how much effort you make and how much agency mm-hmm. you try yeah. and apply, that the structure of the system is so bust, is so broken, that it doesn't matter yeah, what you it, what you do as an individual. Surely you can yeah, see but that. they've got more help. They've got more help now. And I do agree with that, that uh, gentleman saying that his daughter or his child could not get in because they, there's not enough people. Yeah. There's some somewhere along the line, something's not right. They, the government should actually just say, right, that's how much you get and fund it down, like they do with the doctors. 
They get so much per child. All right. Okay. And not actually beg money from us, like to beg money to do the job. All right, Bob. They're Bob in St. Helens there. We say, perfectly fine, but as I say, you know, I do get a bit frustrated with this argument about Netflix and phones or whatever. This is not modern Britain. Like, it doesn't matter. You, you can get rid of Netflix, you get rid of your phone. When rent is so high, when mortgages are so high, when inflation is so high, when childcare is so high, childcare costs are so high, you can cut that back as you want, but like the sort of slightly boomerish view that, you know, that if everyone, it was just so much, it was just as hard back then as it is now. No, it wasn't. Look at any of the data, any of the metrics. Things are harder now than it was then. I know some of you will be spitting into your afternoon coffee at that, but it is just factually true.